Hi guys, uh, these are training on our integrated and broadcasting management system that we use to manage our content production and administration, sales and marketing and other functions. And for us to access it, we yeah, will put it on a, con on a common server where we can be able to access it on our specific machines, for instance, I'm going to use this machine though the file is located on a common server. You open your Windows Explorer, then under networks, uh, you identify a computer code server which is located on this network. You open it, then we have two folders. We have IBMS system and users. You open IBMS system, then you'll see our integrated broadcasting and management system uh, uh, named IBFS system so you open it it's going to open a login screen this is our login screen uh, which prompts you to fill in your username and your password uh, you use your your password for this case let me use mine In case you enter password and you click on login and it tells you incorrect username pass or password, it actually means that uh, what you have to do is that you check your credentials, then repeat, uh, retype your password. Then when you click on login, when you have, uh, when you have provided the correct credentials, you'll be able to login. Now today we are going to look at uh, how to use a broadcasting system specifically for content production. So we have four menus on our first screen. The first screen is broadcasting. We have uh, management. I, I mean the first menu you have broadcasting and the second one is management. We also have governance, system administration, content production is under broadcasting. So you are going to choose option number one, which is broadcasting. Then we have free to air, podcast and transmedia. Free to air basically is where we do our content production, the programming schedule and the content editorial. So we are going to choose option number one. Um, today we are going to narrow down to content production. Therefore we just choose option number one, which is content production. So here we have uh, five items. The first item is program schedule preparation. The second item is production plan. And you have content production. The actual content uh, production, which is option number three. You have content editorial and content production resources. Okay, for us to be able to come up with a new programming schedule, we are going to use our option number one which is program schedule preparation. You just click on it, then it will be able to open. Now, option number one under, under um, schedule preparation is you create a new program, uh, a new production schedule, which allows you to enter a new programming schedule. You may have an, uh, an existing, maybe you want to enter a new, maybe uh, let's say you have, um, you want to achieve um, four schedules per year. Maybe every quarter has got its own a programming schedule. You can be able to use option number one to achieve that. Option number two is maintain existing schedule, which allows you to make changes to the uh, schedule that you've created using option number one. Then after there, we have a set of reports and uh, that allows us to uh, to know the amount of content that is required by region, by schedule, and by individual. Then we can, we can also be able to view the existing programming schedules under option number six. Now I'm going to demonstrate how we can uh, create a new programming schedule by clicking on option number one, create new programming uh, production schedule. This is the screen that opens up. Now this screen allows you to enter the details of a new programming schedule starting from the date, the schedule version and the quota version. And um, 
after you filled uh, you filled in the date and the schedule the quarter version you are going to assign uh, this specific program uh, to, to the head office and the uh, regional suppose you want um, a specific staff to be in charge of uh, this program under head office you're going to, to to click on the drop down menu then you select a code or rather you can just uh, type in the code we have um, references down here under staff codes you can click on it to see a reference where you can be able to check um, for instance you want a code number 010 you can be able to see the name and the and the position in the company so the next thing you're going to do is now you set the day microsoft access uh, takes day one as sunday therefore if you want to input uh, a programming schedule for Sunday, we're going to use code number, I mean, day code number one. Uh, for day code number six, just calculate if Sunday is optional, uh, day number one, then Monday is day number two, then Wednesday, no, Tuesday is number three, right? Number two or three? Yeah. So on so forth. Then you are going to enter our uh, as the program code for a specific program for this case 220 is for DWT and in case that um, the program that you want to set or rather the program that you want to enter here is a flagship program that has got a list of other programs uh, beneath it you can use the subcode for this case uh, we are not using a, sub, uh, a subcode so you choose the title of, of the program for this case you just click on this drop down list then you you will see a list of all programs here you can be able to choose the one that you want then you set whether it's fresh or repeat just click on this drop down list then you'll be able to choose from there then you enter the start time and the end time the start time the specific time at which the program goes uh, starts going on air, or rather it's aired, and the end time is the time at which that program ends. Once we've done that, uh, on top here we have our navigation bar. You can go to next, previous, the last record, and the first record. The first record and the last record. Then you can save a new meaning that uh, you're just going to save the record that you've entered and create an empty one. See, like that one, you have it uh, there, um, assume those errors. So, you'll be able uh, to fill in another schedule. That's it. Any question up to there? Yeah. Okay, then uh, once we've done that, we have uh, a portion, a production apportionment right here. You can click on uh, on this button called production apportionment if you want to set um, the amount of content that should come from head office and the one that should come from the regional for instance when you click on it it opens up this screen that allows you to say this homosome which is called 010 you want it to be produced 100% from the head office and 0% from the regional then you, you choose the the, uh, the scheduled versions that you uh, you want these apportionments to affect questions you must uh, you might say that uh, you want uh, most of it to be uh, to be produced 50 percent from the head office and 50 percent for the uh, from the regional just keep in 50 percent from the head office and 50 percent from the regional for us, we're using, uh, I mean, currently we're using 100 from the head office and 0 from the regional. So I'll just uh, set them back to how they were. Then you can be able to generate an apportionment report. This is it, which shows uh, the, uh, the program code, the title, and the percentage that is supposed to be produced from the head office and the percentage that is supposed to be produced from the region. Okay.
The next thing is uh, maintain existing schedules, which allows you to make changes to the schedule that you've entered. This is the outlook. You can be able to adjust uh, the layout by dragging this, this uh, divider. Here you just drag it. You can lift it up or drag it down. Basically, it's the same as the, uh, the other screen, only that it allows you to make changes to the uh, schedule that you've created. You just close it. Then you'll be able to view our content requirement by schedule report. When you click on, on this drop-down list, you'll be able to see a list of uh, a list of uh, content requirements depending on the schedules that we have currently we are using a schedule 3 version 1 which is at the bottom here you just click on it and you'll be able to see the amount of content fresh content that we need weekly monthly and quarterly it's calculated in hours for you to be able to make it bigger you just click on on the uh, print preview button down here on the bottom right then you'll be able to view it in print print or you can be able to zoom it under zoom then you can set it to 150 or 200 then you can close the print preview you can also be able to view content requirement by region report. This is a report that shows us uh, how much content do we require from the head office and how much do we require from the regions. After that, you can be able to view content requirement by region report, which which shows you the amount of content that is required to be produced from each region and from the, uh, from the head office. Just click on the drop down list, then you click on content production by region. This is the report that shows you how this content has been distributed across the head office and the regional, and also. Uh, the four regions in Western Kenya. For instance, we have Musome. Quarterly, we need 168 hours, and it's produced entirely. I mean, 100 percent from the head office. Therefore, the regions are going to produce zero, zero, zero each. However, for the case of a program like Kavana we need 24 hours, and the head office we are producing 20 hours. And um, I mean, uh. Out of these 24 hours, the office are producing 20% and the region is producing 80%, meaning that the office will produce 5 hours, then Busia, 4 hours, Mboma, 5 hours, Vihiga, 3 hours, Kakamega, 7 hours. After that, we can be able to view content requirement by individual report, uh, whereby we have Bongoma County work plan. Busia County Work Plan and Kakamega County Work Plan and head office. For to be able to view, uh, for instance, for Kakamega, you just click on Kakamega and then you'll be able to see what is required from Kakamega. For instance, you have code 030, Havana, Bamumbo. We, uh, we, we expect 25 minutes from Bungoma County and uh, 040, which is incredible, Western, 16 minutes so on so forth you can now be able to display an existing programming schedule the schedule that uh, you you entered on option number one you can view it at option number six just click on it then uh, weekly programming schedule you click on this then you choose a schedule for this case we are using schedule three so you just click on it then you'll be able to see our your current programming schedule starting from Sunday all the way to Saturday. That's under uh, program schedule preparation. Then option number two, we have program production plan. 
this option allows us to come up with a, a production plan for a whole quarter. When you click on it, it has two options. Create a content production plan and view content production plans. Option number one allows you to enter uh, 12 themes for a specific program. The topmost thing is our navigation bar which allows you to navigate through the records. The first record, the last record. You can save and create a new uh, record. You can print. You can uh, go to the next record and the previous record. Then you can set the program code, the sub code, choose the program name from this drop down list, then choose the scheduled versions, the period and the year. Then you can also assign uh, the person who is responsible for this schedule, both head office and regional. Then you type in the, um, the themes for each week. For instance, we have 12 weeks in a quarter, so with one, we give it a, a, a program, I mean a theme. Like uh, for this case, this was a Kamadala, with one, we have Luya Foods, uh, it's required to be produced by 6th. Um, then the, pro uh, the broadcasting date, we also input it here, and the resources required. Then you can generate the report by clicking on generate report here. Just click on it, then uh, you can key in the year of production, which is uh, for this case is 2022. Uh, enter quarter version. The quarter version, uh, let's see, is 03. And the program code is 070. Once you get your, um, uh, your data correct, you'll be presented with this report that shows you what is supposed to be produced from week 1 to week 12 and the, um, and the approximate dates when, uh, when the content is required when the program is to be aired so there you can be able to view the production uh, uh, the content production plans which is the same report as you've uh, entered. You just key in the year of production, then you enter the quota version, and then you enter specific program code, then you'll be able to present it with the same report. Once you give in the actual data, you'll be able to see a populated report. After that, you have option number three, which is content production. When you click on content production, now this is where the, uh, the actual content is being produced. We receive the content that has been produced both from the head office and from the regional. Then you can be able to make changes on it, which is option number two. After that, we can be able now to see a set of reports, which is head office content production performance report, regional content production report, and the regional content production performance report. And, and of course the content storage report so option number one we, we are going to click on content delivered and receipt now this allows us to register the content that is uh, that has been produced both from the head office and the regional uh, the first thing we are going to key in the staff details or rather the producers details the person who has been responsible for production of this program a staff details here. You enter their staff ID, then the name and the region ID, and the program details. You're going to enter uh, the program code, the program name, the story that was covered, then the size in MBs, the size in minutes, the time in hours, time that was spent during the production of that program, the serial number of that program, and the day of production, the day in which you received it at the head office. Then tab number three, you have location of production where you key in uh, the actual location where this specific program was produced. This is the same office. Then the storage location where this data is stored. You can use the navigation bar on top here to go to the last record, to the first, I mean to the first record, to the last record. You can save and create a new record, you can print.
can go to next and previous. You can also create a duplicate using this duplicate button. And then you can close it. After that, um, you're going to click on maintain content delivered in the city. If at all you want to make changes to, to whatever you've entered, you just click on it. It's the same screen that opens up and it allows you to make changes to the fields that you've created on the, other, on the first screen. After that, you're going to view reports in office content production performance reports. It's a um, combo box that allows you to see a drop down of reports. If for instance, if you want to view a report for code, staff code 030, you can just uh, choose, rather click on 010, then you'll be able to see the production report. This report shows um, the staff name, then the program code, the title of that program, and the minutes that are supposed to be produced in that week in the amount of content that has been produced, and the variance and the percentage of that variance. This is the variance amount, and this is the variance performance uh, percentage. It also, show, it also shows you the monthly performance, uh, the, con the amount of content that is, that is supposed to be produced per month, and what has been produced, the variance amount and the variance performance, the same for quarterly. After that, we are, uh, we are also going to look at regional content performance report. It, it also a combo box when you click on it. It shows you content production by location and regional content production reports. Uh, for instance, let's choose on, content, uh, on regional content production report. It, it prompts you to enter a date, let's say 1st of uh, January 2022 to up to date today's on now okay let's say uh, 30th of august 2022 so this report shows you all the content that has been pro uh, produced within that period and uh, it's a general report that shows you all the content producers both in head office and in the regions you can also be able to view regional content production performance reports that shows you what was expected, I mean the work plan, the survey, the productions. You click on this combo box and then you choose a specific uh, county in which you are interested to view the report. Let's say for Bungoma, just click on Bungoma, then you'll be able to see the report. Yeah. So this is a report that shows how content production has, uh, has been done across uh, the county and the programs. This one shows um, specifically for Bungoma, the content that is supposed to be produced per week, per month and per quarter and, also, and what has been produced and um, the variance amount and the variance percentage. Red means a lot. If something needs to be done on it. Amber means um, the content produced is almost there, and, and red, I mean green means that uh, he's doing good, rather the person producing this content has overproduced. The next thing that we're going, we're going to look at is content storage report, which shows you in the content that has come in from the region or rather or from the head office, where has it been stored? So when you click on option number six, which is content storage report, you'll be able to see uh, a list of programs, rather content that has come in and where it has been stored. These are weekly uh, report, the, uh, which filters um, content that has been brought in by week. So it will only show you the content that has come in in the current week. However, for you to be able to view a monthly report, we have a button on your top right here, view monthly report. When you click on it, you'll be able to see all the content that has been brought in within the current month. 
So this report shows you the, the program code, the program name, and the story that was covered, um, then the size in MBs, and the duration in minutes, the date on which it was received, uh, the device on which it's stored, the file name, how it's saved on that device, and the file path, where the, uh, the specific folders and file names, how it has been saved on that, uh, on that location. You can also be able to view a summary. Uh, you can be able to view a summary of these details by clicking on this summary button, which shows you this Ubuntu key, the uh, two GBOs boot in, which is 60 minutes. You can search uh, for a specific program using the code. If, uh, for instance, when you have this uh, monthly report which is, um, which is having a lot of data and you want to narrow down to, let's say, your boot key, you can just uh, search by program by clicking on this button, search by program, then you enter the program code for boot key is 060. 060. Six zero, then you click on OK. It's going to filter for you the content that you need. If you refresh that, you can be able to search for a different um, program. Let's say a Makini 050. Uh, it shows we've not stored the data currently, but I know the data is there. You know, if you search for a different program, let's say Ubuhana Bo Africa, also is not showing us because it has not been uh, filled in yet. But once you fill in your data, it will be able to show up. O option number seven, you have planned content editorial update. Um, option number seven, basically what it does is that uh, this content that has come in on, on option number one is updated on option number seven automatically, which allows you to now assign an editor in the name of that editor and fill in estimate dates on when you want this editing to start, or when the editing is supposed to be completed, and the proposed broadcasting date. Again. We have the navigation bar on uh, top. You can be able to go to the first record, go to the last record, go to next and previous. You can print this data, then click on save and new. However, uh, under program details, these one are going to be automatically uh, updated from the first screen. Whenever content comes in, you register it on content receipt, it will show up here for you to assign it an editor in the name of that editor and fill in these estimate dates. After there, you can be able to view planned content editorial update. I mean, uh, a planned content editorial report which prompts you to enter the starting date. Let's say it's in, in 1st of January 2022 up to 30th of August. 2022. This is a report that shows you the content that has been planned to be edited. Then option number one shows you a report of content that has not yet been planned for editing. Option number one am I Yes, that's option number nine. It shows you a list of content that has not been planned to be edited. Once you plan, it updates itself from this list to planned content editorial report. Okay. That's about our content production. Now after content production, we move on to the next step, which is option number four, content editorial. Under content editorial, now this is where the actual editing takes place. You uh, you can be able to enter the details of a program. Well, first of all, we have uh, 
a list of three uh, items here. We have editorial, editorial performance update, and we have monthly content editorial report and weekly content editorial report. Option number one allows you to enter the details on when a um, specific program was edited or the final details of that program. For instance, uh, we have for Ubuntu key zero code, um, I mean code 060, the story that was covered in the serial number and the date that was received on which this content was received, size in minutes and the size in, in MBs. What we are going to do here is that we are going to fill in the actual date when this data was edited. For instance, actual dates we, oh, we have start, completion and broadcast. What this means is you key in the date on which um, an editor started working on this work and uh, let's say uh, today. Then this editor completed this work today so under completion you key, uh, you select today then you set in um, the broadcasting date which means uh, which translates to the date on which this content is going to be aired on TV so you click on this uh, date picker and you also assign it a day maybe it's going to be aired tomorrow so you choose tomorrow's date then you fill in what's the actual size after editing uh, you see that if uh, if it was um if the raw content was 20 or 60 minutes and you have edited it and it has um come to maybe 50 minutes just key in 50 minutes the raw content was um, 2 gb what's the actual duration in mb so you uh, you put there the actual size in mb let's say it's now um, 1.5 gb just key in 1.5 gb then you key in the details of the editor the person who edited it this content let's say Ubuntu key is edited by code 101 then you choose the staff name you can uh, pick it from this drop down list then where this uh, content is stored in some folders if it has already been been um, uploaded to youtube you can provide its online link date on which it was uploaded and how it's named on YouTube or any other platform. What you need to know is that uh, the program details are, are automatically updated from the content receipt. So you don't need to make any changes here. In fact, it's locked. You can't edit, you can't edit it from here. If you want to make any changes of uh, these program details, you go back to uh, content receipt after you've done that you check there's this checkbox which allows you to uh, if indeed this content is edited you will check it if it's not edited let's leave it unchecked mm -hmm. and you save your work you save your work yeah, Let's see. I'm using this button on the top left. Okay. And you close. And you can now be able to view a report. Let's see monthly content editorial report. When you click on it, you'll uh, be able to see uh, the content that you've edited, the program code, and the program name, the story that was covered, when it was produced, when it was edited and the initial size in MB split, uh, for instance Ubuntu key was um, 2 GB after editing it was 1.5 GB we discarded 5, uh, 500 MB which amounts to 33 percent of the original work then um, we also have the initial size in minutes it was 60, uh, 60 minutes after editing uh, it was reduced to 50 minutes with discarded 10 minutes which amounts to negative 20 or rather 20 percent of the final work then you, uh, you can also be able to view what what uh, what a specific individual staff has been able to edit in a week let's say i mean in a month 
uh, let's say you want to check what code uh, 103 has edited, you just click on view individual report and you key in the editor code, for instance 103, and then you'll be able to see what code 103, editor code 103 has been able to edit for that month. Yes, that's about uh, content editorial performance. After there, option number five is content production resources. Here you are able to enter program panelist register, expert resources register, the copyright register, and program assessment register. However, before you go there, is there any question um, from program schedule preparation, program production plan? Content production and content editorial. Maybe you, 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 you can be on, on the side of content production resources. Yeah? Yes. If you, uh, you can repeat it again. We've noted. So I was asking if there's any question or. On the four, I have no question. Okay, so we go on the, on the first four. Mm. Okay. Option number five is content production resources, which allows us to uh, to enter our panelist register, expert resources, corporate register, and program assessment register. If you have uh, your panelists who come uh, on, uh, to give views on your program, mm. you're going to, uh, to save the details under option one, which is program panelist register. When you open it, you can able, you can be able to add a new resource person, view resource persons list, and view resource contact details. So if you click on add new resource person, it opens up these uh, these this Hello. window this window that allows you to fill in the names of uh, your panelists and the date on which they attended, the first name, their last name, their ID company in which they work, the job title, and the programs in which they participate, are they regular or not, in their email address, their web page, so you fill in all these details, then you can be able to use the navigation bar on top here to go to the next previous, you can do it, close this, and save, and create a new, a new, um, a new panelist. You can now be able to view your uh, panelist register from here. All these are panels that uh, we have. But there you can be able to see their contact details which shows their numbers. It's arranged in uh, alphabetical order. The same happens for expert resources register. When you click on it, you can be able to add new expert resource. And you can key in the details from here. Then you can be able to print a list of those experts. Option number three, you have copyright register. When you click on it, it's going to take you to a screen where you'll be able to uh, to input, rather fill in uh, copyright details once we've connected it. Then option number four, we have program assessment register. Now this one, when you open it, it gives you four options. Option number one is program presentation assessment form, which is basically a form that you fill to assess um, how, uh, how a specific host and the, and the panelists have presented themselves during uh, the show. First of all, you give it a number, then the program ID, uh, which is the program code, and the, then the program title, person ID, which, uh, that's the, that's the um, host, and the host's name. Then uh -huh. we have a set of, we have a set of uh, questions that are, are outlined here 
Uh, we have from preparation to presentation to organization and post presentation. For instance, uh, the first question here is are objectives and scope of the program defined? Uh, you can score that, maybe three over four. Just key in, maybe four over four or three over four or two over four or one over four, depending on how you assist the program. You know there's a after program? Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, no, this, this preparation, then you have organization, you have presentation and post presentation. Uh, yes. So before the program or after the program? Yes. For instance, this presentation does the host depict natural voice intonation and clarity? If yes, you check this box then provide you evidence, support your why yes and why and I mean uh, you give them a score out of five maybe you give them three, two, one, five, not six over five. Once you are done with that you just close then you can be able to view a report that uh, shows you the same this report uh, gives you the marks of a specific person that you've been marking, marking in quotes. Then you have a program presentation form. This one now shows a, how a specific program has been conducted. The sources that uh, that were, were were consulted during the discussion and the panelists. For instance, we have uh, sources consulted. You give your sources. Uh, for instance, if you are talking about um, dowry, where did you get your facts? So you state your your sources. Maybe um, Google or whatever YouTube videos. Then issues identified, issues to be discussed. Then you now select your panelists. Your panelists one, um, their name, their qualification, and their expertise. Have they been vetted? Yes or no? After there, you'll be able to view a report of the same. Yes, okay, that's under content production. Any question up to there? Mm, I have no question. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. can we confirm that you've understood, please? Yes. Uh, okay. I hope. I second. Know. Maybe questions in the video later. Uh, Derek, have you understood? Yes. Fortunately, he's not in the meeting. Right. Okay. So that's it for today. We were checking. We, uh, we've been training on specifically broadcasting and to be specific on on uh, broadcasting content production and the editorial okay so we've been able to create a programming schedule rather we've learned how to create a programming schedule how to view uh, the existing program um, a programming schedule how to view reports for content uh, requirements the work plans then we've been also able to to see uh, the content that has come in, um, the capture screens, and the reports, and the content performance reports, content storage, and content editorial. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.